My name is Steve Kutcher, and I'm the Spider-Man behind Spider-Man. Part of my job was tracking down spiders. There was a good month or two of actual making phone calls. I was, I was calling everybody I knew who was in the spider business where I thought I would have a reasonable chance to get spiders. And it wasn't just getting spiders. What I had to be able to do was get duplicate spiders when I needed them on cue. So if somebody said, oh, I've got three spiders, well, that's no good. I said, could you get some more? Well, maybe. That's no good. So I had to be able to get, go to somebody who could say, oh, I've got 20 spiders, and I can get you 20 more if you need them anytime. And I actually had to get permits, USDA permits, state permits, to import spiders from New Zealand for the movie. And that was a big deal. And you don't do that overnight. A lot of people say, oh, just, I'll go out in my backyard and get some spiders. I've got lots of them. But when it's raining and it's cold in the wintertime, you're not going to find too many spiders, especially ones that are large enough to use for a movie like this. So it's quite challenging. One of the scenes calls for a spider to bite Peter Parker, and as you can well imagine, if a tarantula was rubbing down from above onto his hand, he would probably notice it. So a large spider was not on the agenda, and I had to track down small spiders that would work. We actually picked a variety of spiders, and one of the spiders we picked is a steatoda. The spider is a small spider, and we had it actually webbed down from the ceiling. I was in charge of the spiders for the movie Arachnophobia. In that movie, we used a spider called Delena cancerides, which is a giant crab spider. And I was lucky enough to track it down in New Zealand, and when Sam saw it, he really liked it. And so we used this as one of our spider candidates in the movie. And I'll have him climb up to the top. And you'll see he'll wave to you. One wave to the camera. Oops. We'll have him go down to the brush side and wave to you from there. And wave to the cat. Come on, get up there. Wave a little bit. Okay. <laughs> the most amazing thing about these spiders is that they live in cracks and crevices. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to take it, put it in my hand, and I'm going to put my hands together. And when I open up my hands, you'll see where the spider is. Oops, and put him and do it again. Here's what it's set. And then to make it move, all I have to do is just tap it. And it's off again. So this, this is a really active spider, uh, a harmless spider, and a very good moving spider. And actually, it crawls just like Spider-Man. He can walk up walls. He can, I'll put him on this glass and you'll see he'll be able to climb up. He can climb up a vertical wall just like Spider-Man. So when I got a call to do the movie Spider-Man, I immediately thought of this spider because if there's one spider that can crawl up anything, it's this one. The original spider, uh, when I first saw the drawings, I had to try to duplicate the drawing that it was the artist concept of what the spider should look like for Spider-Man. And I tried to come up with that, and, and one of the ways we tried was by putting on prosthetics, and another way we tried was by painting. And when we showed these options to Sam Rainey, the director, he decided uh, on one with makeup, and that's what we did. We went with a specific design. When you put makeup on, not only do you have to use the right type, but you can't just put it on anywhere. You have to be aware of their breathing holes. Spiders have their breathing holes on the underneath side, right about here and um, the makeup was put on on the top so you, so it, it wouldn't uh, hurt the spider at all we use this this is a, a paint a painted black widow and when we we're done you can see the paint came off see that? since it was winter time and spiders were hard to come by one of the options would be mounting up spiders so i mounted up some spiders these are live spiders with some prosthetics on them and thinking, well, maybe we could lower them down on a string, or maybe you could take a rubber spider, a small rubber spider, and lower that down on a string for biting. Or... But the trouble with that is it looks like a rubber spider that's being lowered down on a string. There's no movement, and so it looks a lot better using live spiders. There wasn't that many takes, less than a dozen, because there were, I did not do this alone. I had four assistants, uh, Michelle, Matt, and Maya. 
and all of them were very helpful. And what they would do is they would bring over the rack of spiders like this. And this is also how we, how we kept the spider. So if we needed a spider, all we'd have to do is pull it out, this one, pull it out of its little cup device. The spider stays in the top. And then I would have them test each spider before they handed it to me so that I knew that the spider was ready to web. And then I would take the spider and web it down and try to make it hit Toby's hand. And that was a challenge too. I can't say enough to thank the web makers, uh, uh, Robin, Mike, and the property crew, uh, and some of the other people who helped out, as well as Sam's direction, because they were the ones that guided me. I, I like to consider myself as having some talent, but having that guidance is helpful so I know the direction to go. Uh, sometimes they made it a little challenging, but I tried to give them options if they could choose the best spiders. Toby was fun to work with. I had to reassure him about spiders, especially when the spider came down on his hand. He was a little nervous about that. I always tell people exactly what's going to happen, what the risks are, and uh, he went for it and it turned out fine. The lady who played the tour guide in the genetics lab came to me a number of times to ask for the proper pronunciation for spiders, the names of the spiders, and some information about spiders. So I, it was helpful for me to be there just to answer those kinds of questions. And if anyone else had a question as to something about a spider, it was also good for me to be there for that. So it was, it's really important. It's, it's a good idea to have a consultant. And when you have a movie about Spider-Man, it's a good idea to have a, somebody who's a spider expert on the movie. And I like to tell people I'm the Spider-Man behind Spider-Man. Well, in this version of Spider-Man, it takes place in a genetics lab where they actually take different species of spiders and they remove their DNA and combine and make a new super spider that has a lot of these traits. Uh, that spider gets loose in the genetics lab and unfortunately, or fortunately, Peter Parker gets bitten by it. I got a call from Robin Williams who is the property master, an excellent man, and he said that they were looking at um, getting some spiders for Spider-Man. And he also mentioned that they had uh, tried out some tarantulas and Sam didn't want any tarantulas. And so I came in and I did a, a show and tell. I've been interested in insects and arachnids ever since I was uh, three years old. I went, on, I went on and got my master's degree studying insect behavior. I started working in the film industry around 1977 or 78, and I have a tremendous number of films and commercials and things I've done. Some of the things I've done in, have been to release a thousand butterflies at a wedding, to have um, 6,000 beetles come out of a man's chest, to, um, to make a spider crawl into a slipper from four feet away in one try, uh, to make a cockroach run across the floor for a foot and then flip over on its back. So these are the, and these are the kinds of specialties I have. So when, when Spider-Man called, I was really excited. I said, this is a movie I should be doing. Macho Man Randy Savage, a.k.a. Bonesaw McGraw, doing the Spider-Man movie right over here in, uh, California, yeah. Bonesaw McGraw, the toughest guy that ever lived, and, uh, everybody's got confidence in me because they put up money, and, uh, I back it up because we don't have to pay anybody $3,000 because I beat up everybody, you know what I deal? until they get this unknown guy. There's always one person that wounds the party, and we got this guy called uh, Spider-Man. Beat him up, knock him out. Sam Rainey taught me so much. It's unbelievable, man. Just follow him around. Everybody knows he knows the deal, you know what I mean? And we just kind of like, uh, kind of have blind faith. You know, it's just the opposite of uh, wrestling. They send you out there on your own. Uh, it's kind of live at five, but uh, over here, he's got that uh, POV. I've learned some three letters to put together now. You know what I mean? I'll be directing pretty soon, I think. You know, I don't know. Uh, these guys know what they're doing. Columbia Pictures is pretty sweet. Just, I'm just glad to be a part of it. I don't know, man.
man. I'm not acting. I'm actually trying to beat these guys, you know? <laughs> I'm into my own thing. I guess that makes me a good actor when you get into the role. Uh, you know, I woke up this morning and somebody said, hey, Randy, how you doing? I said, hey, hey, Bonesaw, how you doing? You know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm into the character. I'm into the character, you know what I mean? If that's a good thing, that's cool. If it's an ego problem that I have, then it's bad. Bonesaw. <laughs>
above the city and the fact that Spidey could swing in from the upper parts of the city as opposed to being in on the street. Although it's an action film and an adventure film and a fantasy film, all of those parts of this movie work because the basis for the whole story is very human. And I think it makes it all the more interesting and all the better that that you believe, you know, you know Spider-Man can be, can be a part of our world. My name's Ozzy, the art department coordinator for Spider-Man, and this is where the uh, Sam's creative vision and Neil's design vision come together for, uh, for the movie. A lot of the portions of New York have been very meticulously kind of studied and looked for by, uh, by Neil and by Sam and our location scouts. And a lot of them are being designed uh, primarily from scratch, but with a lot of inspiration from, uh, from the uh, New York architecture that's there now. I think too is because like, we see Spider-Man up against like buildings and, and like an architectural element that you'd see from the street would be really small, but when Spider-Man is up against it, all of a sudden it's like a huge detail. So you get to see kind of architecture in a way that you would normally see from the street. We just need to come up with a look, and the construction is the one who figured it out how to hold it together. Yeah, we just get to draw kind of what it's supposed to look like and not worry about the mechanics of it and how it's put together and that sort of thing. Plus, it's sort of immediate gratification for us because we get to draw it and we get to go to the stage and see it like within just weeks. You know? Then it gets destroyed in <laughs> three days after shooting. As you can see, this is a, what we call full-scale detail. Yeah, I'm working on the Osborne Mansion, the Green Goblin house. Mm -hmm. This is, this is going to be the fireplace on his living room. It's going to be his main room, like the living room, all the wood paneling, get totally detailed, the columns, like a one by one, everything is the last molding. Sometimes, you know, you're drafting a building and some part of the building have to stick out farther out or had to be bigger or had to be uh, in a certain shape to accommodate Spider-Man landing on it. You'll be able to see parts of New York and, and, uh, and POVs of New York that you'll never, you would have never seen before because of the, 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 the things that Spider-Man does and the, the, the positions. The places he that, goes. It's like yeah. all the places you were, you were looking at from the street that you wish you could go see and go sit on that nobody ever has been able to do. The team that Neil has assembled for the art department, we pretty much keep it like a family. We're, we're very kind of uh, close with each other and, uh, and it's a very personal kind of, a, kind of a team rather. Sometimes in these big pictures you have such a big art department it becomes very impersonal and I think we've been able to maintain a uh, great communication between that the departments. Sure. Yes, yeah. we've had a lot of fun. Hi, I'm Bill Mom. Uh, I've been on this show for about six months, and we've been doing everything from metal to wood. I am a prop maker. I uh, build sets from the bottom up. We make everything that goes from uh, blueprints to walls. Uh, then the set dressing comes in with curtains and chairs and everything else. But everything that's solid on a set is construction. That's what we build. Uh, we build the doors, we build everything, stairs, everything that works with um, the walls on the exterior part of the set. What I like about this one is next door we built this great big uh, section of a skyscraper. We built the middle section and it's it's really nice. We start out with a metal deck that's 20 feet in the air, and then we went 65 feet in the air above that, and, 80, and another 20 feet above that for all special effects. We, we get to do a whole bunch of stuff with a lot of different people, working with plasters, working with special effects guys, a lot of metal. It's really fun. You do a whole bunch of fun stuff. It's really cool. It's very finite. The, the art director and the designer that I've worked with before, they're very finite guys. They really see it. They can pick it out. So all our details, all the structure that we're doing, we're copying from New York. So we have to, they have to get a shot in New York, and then we have to make sure on the soundstage it's the same shot. We're building stuff that, that we don't get a chance to build. 
I mean, I've, I've, I've been to New York once and now I'm building it. So it's a really cool way of, of looking at a different way of doing it. I spent, on the set that was up here before this one, I spent two months on it and it was down in four days. And that's, yeah, it, it's part of the game, but it's, it is, you see all your sweat go, they come take the picture and then it's gone. I like to, I like to, to watch it and when we, when we see it and it's playing, you go, oh, I did that or I did that or oh yeah, I was there with that. And, that's fun.